Hey guys, today we're actually going to do probably one of the very few times I'm going to do this, but a setup guide or a care guide essentially. So I've kind of figured out that when people very first get into snakes, usually their first snake is going to be probably a ball python or something like a corn snake or king snake. This is what I'm going to do is a setup guide for how to do a baby ball python, keeping in mind baby because it's going to outgrow a 10 gallon tank in a 10 gallon tank properly to hopefully maintain humidity better because that's the number one issue with baby ball pythons excluding feeding. But if we can dial this in, usually they're gonna eat a little bit better. So this is a how to set up guide to do your very first baby ball python setup for under a hundred bucks with a 10 gallon tank because that's kind of how a lot of people get started. So starting off with 10 gallon tank. You can normally pick them up between like five and fifteen dollars brand new at really any pet place anywhere a lot of places you can get them for cheaper on craigslist or used somewhere and if you do pick up one used just make sure you wash it out really well with soap and water so from there on so here's the you know here's this used 10 gallon tank and then we have the lid so the biggest reason why that ball pythons have so many problems with shedding is humidity and so what i did was we're going to take something from the ground up to help kind of keep that humidity in. And so what I did here is I taped this all off with metal aluminum tape, which is something that once like for people who use racks and stuff like that, or do duct work, this is that type of tape where it's resistant to mold, to water, it's metal, it's not conductive, and that way it's not going to catch on fire. Other people, uh, and I would also maybe want to say you could suggest this as a piece of glass or plexiglass or something that's going to cover up about two-thirds of the lid so that we still have all this area for airflow so that way it prevents stagnation but it will help keep the humidity in so here's to get started here's your 10 gallon tank here's this next up is we want to provide heat so here is a an appropriate sized zoomed heat mat these things can work all right it's always a good idea to attach it to a thermostat but you don't necessarily have to these things come in, they're adhesive on this back side and it'll stick right to the bottom. So we'll come over here and we'll put it under here and it'll stick right there because the, a lot of these tanks have that little rim, it can sit right underneath just like that. So there's your heat tape, your heat mat under there. You don't wanna have it all the way over all of it, over here kind of maybe on the warmer side so that way you have an area to provide a temperature gradient. So the hot side over here, the cool side over here, right? So. Next up, and by the way, so here, sorry, I didn't really mention this, the lid, a lot of the used ones, they come with lids and stuff like that. If not, you're buying a brand new lid, you can pick these up for between seven and nine dollars, I'm gonna say eight bucks. The heat mats will vary in price depending on where you're gonna get them. If you're shopping around looking for the cheapest thing, which is kind of the point of this video, just to keep it under a hundred dollars, this one goes for about fifteen dollars. So the next up is substrate. So we're mostly talking about the baby ball python setup. You can change it up if you're doing a North American colubrid like a corn snake or something like that. But a good substrate is coconut or cypress mulch. So you have a couple choices when it comes to that. You can do something like this, which is this, it's the chopped up kind of almost ground uh, coconut husk. They come in dehydrated blocks. You just add water to it. It'll soak up and absorb. It makes to her a little bit messier. They can't burrow down as much because it can kind of get packed it down a little bit. The other choice is something like this, which is this chopped coconut mix, which they also come in kind of these dehydrated blocks, but it breaks apart pretty well. It doesn't pack as easily, so snakes can burrow down in it. And coconut and cypress molds holds humidity very well. You can pick those up depending on how big of a block you want. For something like this, it's about seven-ish dollars on Amazon or on Chewy or something like that. You wanna give a good amount of it in here so that way they have a good amount to burrow in. And it'll also, the if you have a deep substrate layer, that'll also help hold humidity in really well. And the biggest thing you wanna do whenever you're doing this type of substrate coconut is you have to rehydrate it. You wanna add enough water to where it's damp, but if you squeeze it, water's not gonna come out. And that's kind of the perfect amount. A lot of people will ask, well, how much do I do? It's you don't want it dripping, sopping wet because then that can lead to stagnation stuff. I'm just gonna put this down here. So here's the base setup. So far, so good, right? All right, so now we're gonna get to the next part when it comes to kind of monitoring heat and stuff. 
there are these type of things, which are these kind of analog temperature and humidity gauges. I'm not necessarily the biggest fans of these because number one, they kind of, they, the self-adhesion and sticky and the suction cups come off pretty easily, as well as anytime you're dealing with something analog, it's not gonna be completely correct. I would recommend something like this. It's a digital humidity and electronic probe. So you don't have to get the combo, but it does help when you have humidity and uh, thermometer probes in there. And what's great about these is you can move these around in the aquarium. So because they're just these cute little wires, you can put them in here and you can move them around. So the heat probe, you can move it to the hot side, the cool side, and you can figure out what the appropriate grading is if you need to change something up, if you need to add an additional heat source or something like that. And the humidity you could put under, you can put just anywhere in the tank, you can put it under their hides on the hot or the cool side. And that way you can monitor how much the humidity actually is specifically where it is. So, you know, they want to give that humid hide. It needs to be over 60% humidity. You can put the probe that senses humidity under there. Next up, uh, since we're talking about hides and humidity, we're going to talk about hides. So there, this is a cheaper economic video. So it's going to provide what the animal absolutely needs to stay happy and healthy, but it's not necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing. You can absolutely go out, go to your local reptile specialty store and get more naturalistic, more visually appealing ones, but it's going to cost a little bit more. And that, that is okay. It's all up to you. It's the aesthetics of it. This is just getting started. Once you have it, this is the most economic way. And so I have found that like a dollar store, like the Dollar Tree, not sponsored by the Dollar Tree. We don't have any sponsors. Uh, but I have found that a lot of their products can work pretty well. So for instance, this water dish, I have a bigger one there. So everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar. They come in a couple different sizes. I love these things. I use these in almost all of my enclosures, either the naturalistic ones or the tubs just because of how great they are. They're a little bit heavier body than like the deli cups. They don't get flipped over as well. They come in a variety of colors if that's what you guys like. The two different sizes make it great. So for a baby ball python, something like this, you can machine wash them. These things are awesome for this. I would always recommend something like this. So you can put that right here, kind of in the middle to where it's kind of on the hot and the cools because if you have it warm, it's going to also give that a little bit of humidity, but the water also provides a nice spot for that to be to them for, for the snakes to kind of cool off a little bit. So kind of right here in the middle. Next up are the hides. So these came in a little four pack of just cheap little bowls from the Dollar Tree as well. And you can either cut them or use a soldering iron. So this is going to give a little bit more of kind of like a handy, you need to do a little bit more work step, but you know, you, I recommend doing a soldering iron. If you have something like that, it gives it to where it's less likely to have a sharp edge and it might crack, but I've also done it with scissors and knives as well with other ones too. So you're going to want to put one over here on the hot, on the cool side. And you want to want to put one on the hot side. That way the snake can choose where he wants to be either hot or cold. And he doesn't have to sacrifice the comfort of a hide to go for what the proper temperature or humidity gradient is. So we have the hides, but we also want to add a little extra humidity to that. So for that, we have sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is without a doubt, one of, if not the best substrate or medium you can use to add extra humidity. It holds humidity really well. It doesn't really mold a whole lot and you can mine in big blocks. A big block like this came from, uh, uh, it was a really large block that we use for like orchids and stuff like that. But you can pick up smaller ones for about $10, $12 on online or different stores. And I did forget to mention that these humidity and uh, temperature probes for these electric ones, they will go anywhere between like five and $10 for just a straight uh, huge temperature one. And if you do this kind of combo one, it'll bump it up a little bit between like 10 and $20. So just kind of depends on how economic you want to be shopping. The same goes for the sphagnum mosses with the coconut. You want to add water to it to where it's, you know, it's damp, but it's not sopping wet. And then you're going to put a little bit in here like this into both of those. So that way there's extra humidity in both of those. And then we add for this next little part. And for that is we want to add a little bit of 
enrichment or stuff for the animals to actually interact with. Once again, these came from the Dollar Tree. There is a wide variety of different ones like that. Uh, some of them kind of have like styrofoam balls and stuff. I would stay away from those. But this is essentially the exact same type of product that is sold at your local like big box brick and mortar stores or your specialty stores, but it's a dollar. So we're trying to keep this economic. You can absolutely change this up later down the road, but you know, and we can, you can trim this up. I just kind of kept left it whole just for ease and purposes, something like that. This big vine, you can have it drape around just like this and it'll interact with that. And uh, then you can also, if you wanted to add a climbing branch or something like that, you can go pick those up kind of out, out and about. But if you do find one, try to remove as much of the bark as you can, wash it with hot soapy water, and then put it in your oven at around 200 degrees for about an hour to just kind of cook off and per, kind of prevent any of that bacteria or anything that was growing out there with it. If you, and always try to choose maybe something dead, like a dead tree branch or dead piece of cactus or something like that. So last, but and so, you know, that's dollar store kind of type stuff. And that's kind of what you need if you have a climbing branch. I have one over, over off in another room and I forgot to put that on here. So there is that. And then you have your little locking lids because snakes are escape artists. If you have something like this, you can pick these up. They have different types. You can put it like over here. And that's why this works really great. It'll still attach. You can pick those up for four or five dollars. There are more expensive ones that are a little bit better. Uh, and that way you can, this way, so you can see with this tape, this didn't prevent this lid from coming up at all. If you have a piece of plexiglass or glass, put it right here. It also works as a bit of a weight. And then we left this open so that way not only it can provide airflow, but if the room that you have the that you have your little critter in is still a little cool or you want to give it UVB light or different light, that way you can put on a heat bulb or a daylight bulb here. So because this is metal, it's aluminum tape, you don't have to worry about it melting at all. So you can put the little thing right here if you need that. Uh, if you want to do daylight, if you need the extra heat source at all, I personally would recommend a radiant heat panel or something like this ceramic bulb. These little heat fixtures you can pick up all over the place. You can get them for five, seven dollars. Brand new for some of the bigger ones, maybe twelve. But and then these little guys you can pick up between like five and fifteen dollars, just depending on just like uh, with the regular bulbs that come in different modules. This is a hundred watt. You can pick them up for fifty and seventy five. They have a wide variety and ranges of different sizes and sleeknesses and stuff like that. So all in all, this whole setup, assuming you didn't already have this 10 gallon tank, because that's kind of what the reason why most people have these things is because they already have one lying around. All of this grand total puts it around right at $100, which is a good little setup because a lot of people have said, well, getting into reptiles, it's a little expensive when you very first get into it because you have to pay for all the setup. And then after that, it backs up a little bit. So here's a nice economic kind of inexpensive way to do your first setup. With this, it helps with humidity and you have all these extra things to add so that way your baby Paul Python has the perfect environment for it to live happily and healthily. Now, that being said, I understand that a lot of people don't really like tubs and that, you know, there's a lot of things that have been done correctly and not correctly with those plastic tubs. But for a tub that's something like this, which is very near the size of this 10 gallon tank, and I actually found a better one to use for this, but with uh, shipping and everything kind of crazy right now, I everything's on back order, so I couldn't order one in. But these things are being made very clear and plastic insulates temperature and humidity better than glass does. So if you had an appropriate sized tub, and this is a decent size, you could put a newborn ball python in here, but they do make a lot larger ones. They make ones that are bigger than the size of the top of this table that we have. You just drill in some air holes here. You don't ever need this extra thing. Oh, there that goes. You don't ever really need this extra thing. Although if you wanted to, you absolutely could cut a little section and then glue in some screen here to add UVB or, or if you wanted to add anything else into here. And this will cut down on your cost because all of this setup will cost a little bit less because you only need the one thing for this tub. So maybe I'll do a video about that later down the road to show up exactly, hey, here's this really cool, very economic way of doing it. 
This way it's still aesthetically pleasing, you already have it. Or we can do this thing, which these tubs are very inexpensive, and in all honesty, you'll probably have an easier time monitoring the health, temperature, and humidity in a tub, something like this, better than you would this. But here is a proper baby ball python setup with a 10 gallon tank to alleviate and hopefully help with all of the humidity and temperature issues that come with baby ball pythons. Hopefully this video was able to help you guys out. I've come to the conclusion that, you know, this is something that a lot of people have going over the Facebook forums and groups and stuff like that in and out of specialty stores that a 10 gallon tank, a 20 gallon tank is kind of what most people have when they're first getting started. And then you graduate on to exoterras and tubs and stuff like that. So here is a good way to do your very first ball python setup economically under hundred dollars. If you are able to guys, please, please, please visit your special locally reptile stores, put the money back into the hobby, into the community. It helps out everybody. It helps the, it helps the economy out. It helps out the reptile community. It helps out the hobby. And it's great that that way you can put everything that you love back into the community that you love. Once again, hopefully you guys were able to enjoy this video. Hopefully it helped out, gave you some ideas for the future. Like I said, this tape uh, works really well. You can pick it up at any hardware store online for like five to $10. If not, just a little piece of plexiglass or glass really helps with humidity. Please like and subscribe if you can. Hit that bell notification if possible. Please spread your love of any of the things that you love, animals, reptiles, whatever it is. Let me know down in the comments if you had any further questions, and I'll check you next time.